What do a chaotic clown, a potty mouth goo monster, and a ragtag team of prisoners who shop at Hot Topic have in common? They're all comic book supervillains with box office smashing movies, that's what. We're bad guys, it's what we do. On this IMD Brief, we'll look at the recent success of the supervillain movie and what's next for the sinister subgenre. Back in 2008, audiences were captivated by Heath Ledger's portrayal of the clown prince of crime in The Dark Knight. Though this film was about Batman, the villain stole the show and left fans wanting more. Let's put a smile on that face. And in 2016, that's just what Warner Brothers tried to do by releasing Suicide Squad, a supervillain showcase featuring, you guessed it, the Joker. <laughs> well, a Joker. Though the film was met with harsh reviews, especially for Leto's neon nightmare Joker, it was a box office success, making nearly $750 million worldwide. I can't wait to show you my toys. Realizing the potential of the supervillain standalone, Sony spun the first film in their Marvel Studios adjacent Spider-Verse, with last year's Venom starring Tom Hardy, which made over $100 million more than Suicide Squad at the global box office. How do you even know about that? I know everything you do. This year, Warner Brothers returned to their comic clown cash cow by releasing Joker, which became the highest October opening of all time, beating out the previous October opening champion, Venom. Like a bird in the wind. WB and Sony don't plan to hop off the supervillain train anytime soon, as both companies have several bad guy and gal focused films already in the works. I'm so fucking over clowns. <laughs> Warner is doubling down on the Joker's former sidekick, Harley Quinn, with two films. The first, 2020's Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, which features Margot Robbie's Harley in head-to-head -head battle with Gotham City supervillain Black Mask, played by Ewan McGregor. And in 2021, Margot Robbie will return to the character for James Gunn's sequel, requel, reboot? The Suicide Squad, which features a massive cast. I want to build a team of some very bad people who I think can do some good. The final DC supervillain film currently on the slate is Black Adam, which will star everyone's favorite muscle-bound monster man, Dwayne Johnson, in the title role. Black Adam is the arch enemy of Shazam, who was played earlier this year by Zachary Levi. Levi will be returning to the role in Shazam 2. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm a superhero. Next year, Sony will continue to expand their Spider-Verse with Morbius, starring Jared Leto. The film will follow Dr. Michael Morbius, who, after a botched experiment, requires human blood to survive, which sent him on a collision course with that webhead from Queens in the comics. You deserve yeah, that. You're a criminal. Bye, Mr. Criminal. And in October of 2020, Sony will attempt to repeat its box office success with a Venom sequel directed by Andy Serkis that will feature Woody Harrelson as the film's central villain known as Carnage. When I get out of here, and I will, there's gonna be carnage. This new model of supervillain standalones is one way that Sony and Warner Brothers seem to be differentiating themselves from Marvel, as the MCU's slate is currently supervillain-free. Though that could always change. Here's looking at you, Doctor Doom. Come and get it. For more supervillain stories, stay glued to imdb.com slash imdbrief.